and now you can see the AI chat widget is available and it is also customized now I'll ask my and now I have added memory that means this chat widget should now have the memory where it can remember the previous conversation now it says I can provide you business consultation to help your customer service AI chatbot so that means it now knows the context that it has access to the memory if you are an executive or a business owner or any tech enthusiast you probably already know the importance of business process automations or workflow automations for your business or for your work having AI agents integrated into your workflow automation can provide you a massive benefit in terms of automating any complex business workflow and that's what we are going to explore in this video using open source workflow and AI automation tools. Hi, my name is Abhijit. You are watching Note Together where I try to simplify latest tech and innovation for your future and your business. Let's get started. Welcome back. If you are any close to workflow automations, you have probably heard about Zapier, Make.com, Public Connect, etc. Et because all of these tools are either heavily advertised or being promoted by the YouTube influencers. However, there are other open source alternatives such as Active Pieces, NI10, which although have comparatively less number of app integration out of the box, but have a brilliant community and open source integrations using REST API or similar method to integrate any application that you want. That means you have complete freedom to run this tool however you want completely for free for your personal or even internal business use cases. While almost all of this workflow automation tool nowadays supports integration with OpenAI API to support AI use cases, NA10 is my personal favorite because NA10 provides AI agents out of the box inside the workflow automation engine which is really like icing on the cake. And to add cherry on top of the cake, they also support different open source large language model, even the Olama integration to support your local use cases. In this video, we are going to do a quick installation of the NA10 in our local system and then quickly go through all the important components that is available within the NA10 tool, which really makes it powerful low-code workflow automation engine loved by many, many developers. Then we would create a quick Q&A AI agents using Vector Database as its knowledge base. And finally, we are going to integrate this Q&A agent with an AI conversational agent with its own memory so that I can create a chatbot for my website which can remember users' interactions and provide answer to users' query effectively and like a human assistant. The video will become so long that I have decided to split it into two parts like last time. In the first part, we will discuss about how to install this NA10 locally, we'll do the installation and then we are going to discuss different components within this NA10 tools that you can use to make a really complex workflow automations using the low-code node-based approach. In the second part, we will focus more into creating AI agents within the workflow automation engine. So if you are really aware of NA10 already, you have been using NA10 already for your existing workflow automations, you can skip this entire video and hit the subscribe button to stay tuned for the second part whenever it is uploaded. However, if you are really new to the workflow automation, please continue to watch this part. With that said, let's get started. Okay, so let's start with installing NA10 in our local system. Here I am in the NA10 GitHub page. NA10 is an open source workflow automation tool as I have already described before. However, please note that NA10 runs with fair code distribution model. Now, I am not a legal expert in copyright and licensing, but what I understand by fair code distribution model is that you can use this NA10 software, you can self-host it and you can run it for your personal and even business and commercial use. However, you cannot white label the software and sell it to someone else or you cannot make changes to the source code and sell it to someone else. I hope this all makes sense to you. So that means I can really host the software myself and I can use it for my website or for any of the internal business processes. So this is their documentation link. I'll also attach this link into the description. They have a fairly good amount of documentations regarding how to host it, how to run it and all the different nodes that they have. Apart from that, they have a really good community. And this is the documentation on how to install it using Docker Compose to run it in local. So they have also documentation regarding installing on Google Cloud, Azure, AWS on, and many other cloud services. In this case, we are going to use uh, the Docker Compose to install NA10 in our local. Okay, so let me create a folder called NA10. We will clone the repository from here. 
okay so now we have cloned the repository we will go inside the repository we'll go to the docker folder and then compose when you go inside the compose folder you will see three subfolder one with subfolder with ssl with postgres and with postgres and worker if you want to run an atn for your business use case where you let's say want to run it in a cloud server and you want to host an atn behind a reverse proxy you should use the docker compose within the subfolder with ssl the reason is because this docker compose file comes with traffic component so traffic is used as a reverse proxy if you're not sure about reverse proxy please write down in the comments and i will definitely bring a video about what is reverse proxy what is forward proxy and all the other security proxy related content so yes as, as i said if you want to run it for a, a proper business use case you can use the subfolder.ssl or combination of subfolder.ssl with postgres or postgres worker so now let's look at the with postgres option the with postgres option will ensure that when you run the n8 end, it will also spin up a postgres database as a container and the reason is because whatever workflow or connection that you will create within n8 end, those information will be saved within the postgres database now you do not have to spin a postgres database locally if you are using a cloud hosted postgres and then you have to specify the connection here for the postgres service that you are using in our case we'll use the local postgres instead now you will see there is a dot env file so in this dot env file you can save the uh, postgres admin user non-admin user id and password so this is the user id and password n8 and will use to connect to your postgres instance also save information within the postgres database similarly you have with postgres and worker folder and there you have a docker compose now the simple thing to note for with uh, with postgres and worker is you have uh, something called x shared parameter what that actually means is you can use the n8 and image you can reuse the n8 and image to spin up as many worker as you need uh, basically when you specify x shared it, it means that it will share the same postgres and redis database and the volumes underlying volumes of data regardless how many worker of n8 and that you are running um, this also used redis as a memory cache now for this example we are going to use the with postgres docker compose file because that is the most simplest form of uh, n18 that we can run in our local and with that what we will do we'll first change the env file so what we will do is we will change the user to something like postgres admin we'll set a password let's say n18 password so now that we have changed the env file um, there's nothing that you need to really change here in the docker compose file at the moment but as we go forward create more work there may be some changes or addition we need to do in the environment section which we will take a look later now with all these changes are done we are ready so please make sure you have installed docker and the docker compose uh, utility if you are not sure how to do that follow along this documentation and you should be able to install docker compose plugin in your own windows system and linux system let me know in the comments if you need any help now what we will do we will go inside the copy postgres folder and we'll run docker compose of minus t now because i have already run it it didn't took a long time for me to start it but for you it will probably download the n8 n image and the postgres image build it run it might take a while so don't worry about it now that my n8 n is started what i can do is i can go to the browser and i can say localhost 567 now when you would go to the localhost 5678 you might see a registration interface because i have already run n8 n it is asking me to sign in now as i have logged in you will be able to see a lot of workflow that i have already created earlier but don't worry we are going to explore this workflow engine or workflow automation tool in much more detail so we are going to create workflow from start and i'm going to explain you step by step so now let's create a new work so add workflow let's name it my first work automation now you can see this tool have a couple of options in the left and then there is a big plus button here and then you have settings help and your profile information here for the hosted version or the free version you really do not have access to variable that is only available to the enterprise plan but don't worry about it you do not really need a lot of variable for general workflow automations that we are going to do similarly with credentials here whatever connections that you will make you will probably save some api you will probably do a connection for your google account all those connections will be saved into the credential section this template uh, option will give you all the 770 community build templates that you can reuse in your workflow and maybe just modify it. now there are really a lot of use cases that is already covered by these templates from ai to customer service to four nodes like there are a lot of use cases that you can explore by yourself so let's go to our workflow now you see there's an editor and then there is an execution tab so editor tab is where you will create your workflow whenever the workflow will get executed you will be able to see the executions here so this will help you later on debug if the workflow is failing you can go to the execution tab and you can see why it is failing and stuff now once you click plus you will be able to see a lot of options here just so you know n8 and e is node based low code workflow automation engine so basically whenever you go into each and every sections you will see nodes 
for each and every app integration that they support at the moment for apps they i think support over 350 plus integration uh, which is out of the box and but they also have something called code node so that means you can write javascript code within your editors using which you can also integrate any other application they also have an http request node using which you can actually call any rest api so that means if you have an app that is not integrated out of the box but it supports rest api you can use the http request node to integrate your apps the real benefit or power that comes with n810 is this code node really because using the code node you can actually write any of your logic if you're if you're coming from a development background now on a schedule is basically nothing but a schedule trigger so if you have workflow that you want to run like let's say every few interval you can use a schedule node to schedule your workflow to run like every five minutes five hour or every day every month whatever you want similarly you have an on webhook and this is really really powerful as well so basically using webhook you can make your workflow automations available as an api to be called by another webhook or your application as well so if you want to access your workflow automations through an api let's say from your application or you integrate your workflow automation from your application you can easily use the webhook function that comes up with different authentication mechanisms as well n8 and form trigger is another really interesting node that you should definitely use in your business workflow you don't need to probably use any kind of type form or anything so using n8 and form trigger you can actually define your forms here and you will be able to access the form using this URL. And once user will submit their information, for example, if you have a sales lead page, you can create a sales lead form here. User will enter their email address, contact number, and business use case. And once they enter and submit, then it will trigger the workflow and you can basically save those information, let's say in a database, or maybe you, you can run through different logic within the workflow automations and save all the system or respond to the user later on. So this is a really, really good business use case where you can use their form trigger. Similarly, there is a manual button. So this manual button is nothing but when you are creating your workflow, you can first use the manual button and you can test it. Like when you click the test workflow, the manual button trigger will work and you can test the workflow. And let's say once your manual test is done, you can delete this and you can use any of the existing trigger. Now let me create a manual trigger first and then click plus here. Now you will see a lot of other options coming up in the right. For example, one of the options is like data transformation. So basically you can use filters. You can use limits, you can remove duplicates from your data sets and aggregate, merge, and there are lots and lots of functions that you can use out of the box without writing the logic, you know, using code modules. And that is really, really good. For example, the crypto module, if you want to, let's say, take an input and you want to make a hash, you can use the crypto module and create a hash. Similarly, in the advanced AI sections, you have all the AI related nodes that is already available. So they have incorporated a lot of the LangChain nodes in within the workflow engine. So that means if you want to create any LLM chain or question answer chain, run an AI agent, you can use those nodes and, and maybe create your AI work automation as well. Similarly, uh, they support a lot of the file out of the box. They support CSV and JSON as well, which is in most of the cases we use it. You can also upload to FTP and SFTP server or download from a server. You can edit image out of the box. You can do compression and decompression of the files uh, from within the workflow automation. And one of the really interesting and powerful use case is this flow nodes. So using the flow node, you can run if and else logic. You can run loop logics like for loop and while loop. You can also do like comparing two data sets out of the box. You have switch. If you're coming from a programming background, you know the switch cases. You do not need to use multiple nested if and else. Rather, you should you can offer switch use case. Now let's type something called let's say Google Sheet. When you go to uh, out of the box application, you will see two options. One is actions and one is trigger when you define a workflow the trigger node will trigger the workflow whereas the action is when the workflow is triggered when if you want to take an action that is where you want to use the action node just check out the tool and let me know if you have a really complex use case you cannot get your head around it but always as a first place go to the templates and check out if your use case is already built by the community in in one of these templates and use the templates to start for example if i use this one for example if you follow the setup template uh, instruction and if you say create a telegram a credential you create a binance credential as it will ask step by step then you do not have to do anything you do not have to even edit anything within the workflow and your workflow will be ready so this was a very short walkthrough of the n8n workflow automation tool in the next part which is the second part i will create the ai agent and also integrate it with my wordpress based website so stay tuned for that subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already and take care i'll see you in the next one bye